I'm sure you're all familiar with the unsightly wheel gap that comes for free with the purchase of every truck. Well, I'm going to show you one of the most complicated ways of getting rid of that. Yeah, I know, that's pretty weird, but we're going to fabricate our own set of custom drop spindles. So I'm going to start with a little high level overview of the CAD work that we did, but I've already got a bucket full of laser cut parts in front of me and we've got our spindle tapers machine. So I got everything I need to start right into the fab of this stuff. The idea is less about what we're creating and more so about showing you how I create it in case there is little tips or techniques that you pick up along the way that help you out with your fabrication. Um, it's cool to see how somebody else builds something. I know I learn tons from watching uh, videos on how other people create. So if there's any value in what you guys see here today, don't uh, hesitate, leave me a comment. Um, don't forget to subscribe and like, and let's get right into it. Through the magic of editing, we're gonna start with a clean work surface. God damn it, I wish that was real life. So I wanna start by uh, giving a quick little shout out to Alibra. The software that I use here is version 21. This software I've been using for probably um, eight or 10 years. This is what I learned how to do all sheet metal on. So I actually design all of my chassis on this still. Um, I use Fusion 360 for the machining aspect of it. So there's a lot of things that I will still solid model in Alibra import into fusion for the machining process uh, but like i said all the chassis and stuff i still use a libra very powerful software um, great guys to deal with so this is the spindle itself um, i'm not going to show you the design process of it i'm just going to show you this quick little final model of it this is designed for a four-wheel drive truck so it retains four-wheel drive you can see this axle shaft poking through here this is the um, final fitment so you can check how the rotor fits the clearance to the brake caliper so you can check all of this stuff in CAD with um, actual GM CAD models here so if I just turn these guys off and get an idea there's the bare spindle by itself so that's what we're gonna make in the shop. One of the massive benefits with designing this in CAD is I can make my fixture directly in the program. So what I do is I take my spindle, start a new assembly, and then I make my fixture directly off of that. So you can see I can, I can set up all of my dimensions, I can set up my angles, I can build this fixture in CAD. So when I build this in real life, on my fixture plate, then it holds these tolerances for whatever I need. We're gonna start bending up the uh, body of the spindle. When I make this spindle, it's all made out of quarter inch plate. So this is all <clears throat> laser cut quarter inch plate. Um, one little trick I wanna show you guys is when I send my files off, I get all of my bend lines etched into it. So that etch lines you can see here and here, those are my bend lines. So when I go to lay this out for bending, I don't need to draw on where all of uh, my bends take place. They're already CNC'd in there for me. You can see those tabs, those lineup tabs. I'll show you what those are for later. So this die set I made for my press break when I was first starting out well before I had a, a big press break. I still use this thing all the time actually for smaller runs of bends. If you're just starting out, all you need is a press break and uh, I think you can even buy a couple of these die sets. It's a pretty handy little thing. So what I do is line up my etch marks in the die so I make sure the center of my die is hitting into my bend. I square this to my die, so I make sure I'm bending perfectly square. And then set this up.
Now, I want to get a bend angle of 60 degrees on this. So what I do is digital protractor on it. And then I just bend until, if I want 60 degrees, I'll bend until this reads 30 degrees. So that's taking about 30 tons of force. That was about 30 tons of force to bend that chunk of quarter inch plate. So it's, uh, it's nice to have this air over hydraulic press where I can really control the tonnage on it to give me a really nice clean bend. So there you can see 60 degree bend. So I want to show you that um, tab thing I was telling you about. So the way these fit into here, like that, you can see those tabs, they line up my corner to corner real nice. See how close that bend came onto there too? That was with no measuring at all. I just bent it right on where my etch lines were and it lined up exactly where it needed to be. Yeah, so you can see how, how those tabs work. So they kind of serve two functions. What they do is they line up my part real good corner to corner here. And then when I fit this, when I um, start the assembly, I melt in those with the TIG and I use them as filler to lock the part together. Really help build a better product or at least a more efficient product in the end. <clears throat> yeah, so I guess, look, designers, I wanna to talk to you guys, designers, engineers, aspiring designers. If you guys wanna be the best you can be at your job, School is great and all, but get your ass in the shop and build something. I mean, there's no, all of these little things you pick up and it makes you a better designer or engineer or whatever. If you're not in direct conversation with the guys that are fabricating your parts, or if you don't have an open communication with the guys that are fabricating your parts and you're just designing them, there is so many little tips that fabricators can tell you on what would make your design better. Just something as simple as adding these little tabs saves hours and hours of fit up work. But unless you got your ass in the shop and built something, how are you supposed to know that? All right, let's get some of this tack together. If I got a common bend that I do uh, multiples of, um, I'll show you how I do that. So same idea, this is the back plate for that, for that spindle. There's multiple bends in this one, but um, you can see these etched bend lines. So this gets set up in the press. And what I've done is uh, for a couple of common ones, I have laser cut some acrylic little stops here so this is my 45 degree what I do is I place this up against the face of my bend and then I bend until I touch the bottom of that now this is 22 and a half degrees but that gives me a 45 degree bend very repeatable simple way of uh, not having to put a protractor on it you just bend to that gauge touches the top bend in this spindle back in plate is another little tricky one so the bend is very close to where this ball joint flanges when this tips over the ball joint the upper ball joint uh, slug fits into there 
what I was finding was, since my bend lines are so close to this, whenever I bent this, these would actually pinch in, and then it was a hell of a time trying to get this to fit. So a simple solution was I just machine up a aluminum slug that fits in place of that, holds that tolerance, and then um, when I bend it, that slug stays in there and keeps everything straight. And you can see it holds my circle. It deforms a bit on the underside when it pulls, but my circle remains where it needs to be. All right, we got our lower assembly all tacked together here. So we're gonna jam this back into the fixture and start assembling the whole spindle. So first thing in the fixture, bottom Okay, we got that cinched down. This gets our tie rod slug. So you can see how this is designed. This transfers the load directly from where the caliper bolts in through the spindle flange and internally this gets welded and then capped all into it. But internal to that is a big chunk of this three quarter plate. So this is the piece that we bent up that I showed you. That little trick for this, you can see the how this slug actually fits in it. If we had bent that without putting that little slug in there, that would have been so tight that this never would have fit.
Let this thing kind of settle in the fixture a little bit, cool down a bit. And uh, we're gonna flip it over and weld the top side of the spindle flange. Ideally, what you want is this to come out of the fixture without a big giant fight. So you want to be able to slide all of these slugs out without a fight. You can see that how that bolt slips out of there. It means we're not, we haven't warped any of these dimensions when we're putting this in our fixture. So this should just lift right out, like that. And you can see you're starting to take shape. So we'll weld all of this side and then start fitting the top together. And then the rest of these open corner to corner joints are all gonna be MIG welded. So we'll show you that as well. But for now, we'll get this face TIG welded in and then fit the upper ball joint in. Here's a good view before I put the top of the spindle on, on how the structure is all inside here, internal. So that's that really thick spindle flange, this brake bracket that actually extends all the way through and ties tie rod in through this whole assembly. And then when this piece goes on, closes that off nice and neat and makes the second piece for our upper ball joint slug. So we'll get this back in the fixture and get that tacked into place and then weld the rest of this. I like to do this one last because I can have all of my other points located in here and then set my upper ball joint spot so I get my alignment right every time. Sometimes if you're trying to fight all of these locations at the same time in the fixture, when you weld it, it's gonna move. So if you take this out of the fixture, these may not line up at the end of it. So I like to do the lower ball joint to the spindle fixture to the brake caliper as a fixed point and after that's welded, I know it's not gonna move anymore, back in the fixture, and then when I set where my upper ball joint is, I'm not fighting the stresses of the rest of it. So I can line that sucker up to the fixture. Under no stress of the rest of the spindle. Last little piece that closes out the upper side of this spindle. See again, they got, got little tabs on them that set the distance and the height for it. So this little piece just fits into here like that. Those tabs don't let it push in too far anyway. We'll uh, get that one tacked in and then this can come out. Again, a couple more little bent plates, fished mouth for that tie rod. So that slug rather. Let's fit in just like so. So I use those tabs I was showing you again. And I can just melt that in there for a quick little tack and I can do it one-handed without having to add filler rod. 
pretty damn handy having those in there. Here's a good shot. You can see the internal to that before I close it out, how this brake bracket ties all the way through and is welded to this tie rod slug as well. So inside that is just not a hollow cavity. It's a good way of tying your stresses all the way through. So yeah, this little piece just welds in the top. Close that out. slug all closed in so it's time to break out the MIG welder and we're going to finish off all these corner to corner joints and that's a wrap. All right, that's it. We got her all fully welded out. This side's done. Uh, the video is more so about how I create things, not necessarily what it is that I'm creating, but more so the process. So if you guys picked up any little tips or tricks along the way, don't be shy, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Um, I don't know if you like this, uh, you know, build in the shop kind of format better than the educational Tesla stuff that I've been doing, but I do have a few more Tesla things coming up. So I'm gonna, probably switch gears and do a bit more of that. Um, yeah, if you made it this far, I really appreciate a quick little subscribe from you. Any sort of engagement lets me know that uh, this is adding value to what's already on YouTube. It um, takes a lot of time to make these videos. I'm a one man show here, so it takes a, a fair amount of effort to plan it out, video it, edit it, all that sort of stuff. If it's not, you know, if it's not getting any sort of reach, there's no point in me doing it. So that subscribe really does actually help out a lot. Yeah, as always, um, super appreciative. Well, to all the astute viewers out there, you will notice this is only one side and a vehicle has two spindles. So I got one more of these suckers to make. Get the hell out of my shop.